blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The title of the message this morning, and like I was explaining in this congregation early, the KJB, this is how you're going to find the title on the KJB Bible, Jeremiah chapter 35, the Rechabites, and Jeremiah's underwear, Jeremiah chapter 13. Okay, so we're going to go first to Jeremiah 35. We already prayed for this message, so I'm going to go straight into the preaching. For those who are watching on Facebook and YouTube, thank you for watching every Saturday. And I'm going to ask you right now, those who are watching on Facebook, if there's somebody already watching, do you know, without Googling and without asking your phone, do you know who the Rechabites were in the Bible? Anybody knows? All right. We've got to study a little more. We've got to learn more and memorize more, not just Psalm 23. So Jeremiah 35, verse 1 to 9, says this. The word which came, came unto Jeremiah and from the Lord in the days of Je Je Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, saying, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them and bring them. Watch this. What God is asking Jeremiah to do is say, Go unto the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them and bring them into the house of the Lord. Into what do you think? What do you think God is calling the Rechabites to do? He's bringing them into the house of the Lord. Follow me in the scripture of the ch chapter 35, verse 2. Go, go into the house of the Rechabites and speak unto them and bring them into the house of the Lord into one of the chambers and give them wine to drink. All right? Verse 3. Then I took Jezaniah, the son of Jeremiah, the son of Jehazabim, and his brethren and all his sons in the whole house of the Rechabites, and I brought them into the house of the Lord, into the chamber of the sons of Hanan, the son of Eglite, a man of God, which was by the chamber. So right there, the Bible is telling you that Jeremiah did brought the house of Rechabites to the house of the Lord, to the temple of the Lord. The princess, which was above the chamber, Messiah, the son of Salom, the keeper of the door. So they have to walk through all these people to go to the, to the, to the temple of God. Verse number five. And I said before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, this is Jeremiah saying, I said, I sat down, he set up a table, he set up some chairs, and he said, I said before the sons of the house of the Rechabites, pots full of wine. Okay, so he comes and sits pots, barrels, jars full of wine. It was not just a glass of wine. It was not just a... a so, uh, 12 ounces of wine, he had pots full of wine, and cups, and I said unto them, drink your wine, get drunk, because if somebody give you, somebody, yeah, don't look at me like that, you're going to understand that, you get, you, you get me this, these faces, you give me these faces, don't make faces, listen to the word of God, God tells Jeremiah, send pots of wine, to my wife is making faces over here, but I make the same faces when I read the scripture, follow me, you got to stay with me. God tells Jeremiah, not only get, uh, how many ounces I got over here? Not only get 16 ounces uh, bottles of wine to these Rechabites, get pots, jars, uh, uh, pitchers full of wine, enough for them to get drunk, okay? And it seems like God is going against his own world because the Bible said do not get drunk. And he instructed his servants not to get drunk. Even Paul told Timothy, drink a little wine for your infirmities because of your stomach. But in this case, God is telling Jeremiah, give them enough. Have enough drink before them so they can get drunk. All right? So that's what it says right there. So we have, uh, and it, it goes on to say, but they say, well, I'll tell you the rest in a minute. And I'll leave you right there. So Jeremiah right here, can you imagine being in the shoes of Jeremiah? Jeremiah have to obey the voice of the Lord every time God came and said, Jeremiah, now I want you to go there and to do this. Now I want you to go to the Israelites and tell them this. And Jeremiah even said, Lord, every time I open my mouth, these people want to beat me up, want to put me in a dung and a well and in jail. I don't want to do that no more. That's why he was the weeping prophet. No wonder why, if you have to do the same thing, every time Jeremiah opened his mouth, the Israelites knew, oh, he's, this man is coming again, and he's not bringing a word of the Lord. They, they, 
they are accused Jeremiah of not bringing the word of God because every time Jeremiah spoke, it was the judgment coming upon the wicked Israelites that disobeyed God. So Jeremiah goes, uh, God comes and tells Jeremiah, turn yourself into a bartender and sell them almost margaritas and, and daiquiris and, and martinis because he said, set up a nice table, set up a nice seat and put pots full of wine. All right? So right here, Jeremiah obeys the voice of the Lord and he set up the table for the Rechabites to drink all this wine. But the Rechabites don't take the wine. But what I want to show you right here, I want to go back a little bit. I told you the title of the message was the Rechabites and Jeremiah's underwear. When you go to Jeremiah chapter 13, you find right there Jeremiah's underwear. Okay, so God comes to Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 13 so you know that I'm reading the Bible. This is not the book of Edgar. This is Jeremiah 13. You find Jeremiah's underwear. Thus says the Lord unto me, Go ye and get a linen girdle. And if you look at the Bible definition of girdle, it's an underwear. And put up in thy loins and put it not in water. That means don't wash this underwear. Put this underwear on. And don't wash this underwear. Okay, see, things are getting a little even more uh, excited over here. So, I got the griddle, Jeremiah says, according to the word of the Lord, and put it on my loins. So, he put the underwear, and the word of the Lord came unto me the second time. This is God says, okay, now you obey. You went and bought the underwear. You put it on. Now, I want you to do this. Take the underwear that thou hast got which is put on your loins, and arise and go to the Euphrates River and hide this underwear. Hide this underwear that went under a rock, keep it right there, and go away. Then the Bible, you guys can read this on your house. On your house. Then right there on Jeremiah, then God talks to Jeremiah again and says, now go back and get this underwear out of that place where you hide it, and bring it to the Israelites. Now you just have to follow me here. If you have a homeless guy on the street who has not taken a shower in two months, and you ask him to show him, show you your underwear, I hope you don't do this. What is that underwear going to look like? What is that underwear going to smell like? What is that under? You don't even want to be near an underwear like that. Anybody's underwear. I hope you're not going to be anybody's, uh, near anybody's underwear. But God tells Jeremiah, now that you wear that underwear for this time, now that all the, all the smell, all the nastiness is on this underwear, and you hide it, the Bible says that this underwear, by the time that Jeremiah went and got the underwear, he had mold on this underwear. You can read it for yourself. He had mold. So God said, now go get that underwear. And this reminds me of a preacher who preaches with, on, with diapers and with other things. And Jeremiah goes and gets this underwear and bring it before the Israelites. And God showed the Israelites, this, you, know, you know, this is what God says to the Israelites. Jeremiah 13 verse 10, he says this. These evil people which refuse to hear my words, which walk in their imagination or their heart, and walk after other gods to serve them and to worship them shall even be as this underwear, which is wow. good for nothing. Wow. So God tells Jeremiah, put this underwear on, wear this underwear, don't wash it, hide it, wait until it has more, now go get it and present this underwear before the Israelites and show them you are like this underwear, good for nothing. Because even if you wash this underwear, it's not going to come out clean. But the, your sins can be washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Good preaching. So God is saying, and he's using, remember he told us Isaiah to go with your buttocks naked too. You know? You, you, a lot of people don't even want to come to church. We have people saying they're Christians and they don't have a home, home church. We invite them to come to church. They don't even want to come. I, who will want to obey the voice of the Lord in those days if they ask you to do some of the things that he asked Isaiah and Jeremiah to do? Huh? Some, of, some, of, some of these Christians today, they don't even want to read the Bible. They don't want to even stop the fornication, stop the lying. They're not going to do any of these things. They're not. All right? So we already dealt with Jeremiah's underwear right there. But you can continue reading Jeremiah 13. So, 
So right here, Jeremiah is obedient unto the Lord. Amen. Okay? So he used his underwear to rebuke Israel. <laughs> That's pretty much what God did. He used his underwear to show them how filthy they were. Wow. Now he comes to Jeremiah 35. And remember, every time Jeremiah showed himself to the Israelites, it was the judgment coming to the Israelites. So now we get to Jeremiah 35. And Jeremiah, God asked Jeremiah, he said, go to the house of the Rechabites. And when the Bible says, go to the house of the Rechabites, it's not that he went to only one home. He went to the village. He went to the town of the Rechabites, where the Rechabites were living. It's like today saying, I'm going to go see the Muslims. Where do you go see Muslims? You go to Saudi Arabia. Uh, if you say, I'm going to go see the Buddhists, well, then you go to China, and you get all them, all as many Buddhist people, Chinese people that you can gather. Uh, I cannot say, let's go see the Christians in America, but because there's, there's, there's very few left in America. Amen. But in this case, Jeremiah is told, go to the house of the Rechabites and bring, and, and bring me that family. Bring me that generation into my house. Bring me a congregation. He's asking Jeremiah, bring me that congregation before me and to my temple. I'm going to test these people. And I'm going to show Israel, I'm going to rebuke Israel one more time through the Rechabites. So these Rechabites, they have their own convictions. They were not wrongs. And if you read Jeremiah, one other conviction they have, they will not build houses with stone. They will live in tents, moving from place to place. I imagine the Bible don't say this, but I want to believe that every seven years, it was the year of Jubilee, it was the time when the Israelites, it was like a reset button, they will start all over again. If you have a debt against your neighbor, you have to forgive that debt. If you have slaves, you have to let some of the slaves free. So I believe these people were moving from, from place to place every seven years in the year of Jubilee. Anyway, the Rechabites. Who were the Rechabites? And I'm trying to explain the Rechabites over here the best I can. The Rechabites started like this. Moses was in Egypt. And Moses uh, uh, defend his Israelites Hebrew brothers, and he frees Egypt, remember? He goes to the desert where he meets Jethro. He stays in the desert for 40 years where he meets Jethro. Jethro has a daughter. Her name is Sephora. Sephora meets Joe Moses, and they marry, and they have kids. So now Moses is part of the family of Jethro. Jethro has the son named Hobab. When, when, if you read Exodus 18, you see that Jethro went to advise Moses how to take care of the huge congregation that he was a pastor. Then Jethro has the son, his name is Hobab. Hobab met Moses, and Moses, on Book of Numbers 10, we're going to read it, Book of Numbers chapter 10, verse 29, Moses tells Hobab, we are about to get into the promised land, and you, Hobab, because you have lived outside Egypt around the promised land, you know the land very well. I want you to come with us and to be my eyes. And Moses said unto Hobab, the son of Raguel, Raguel is another name for Jethro, the Midianite, Moses, father in law, we are journeying to the place which the Lord has said, given to you. Come with us. Come with us, verse 31, that you might be our eyes. So Hobab, in the beginning he didn't want to go, but then he accepts, and he goes with Moses, and he is the eyes of Moses in the land, because he knows the land very well, and because he went with Moses, he ended up enjoying the promised land, and they were not part of the God's chosen people. Now, the Bible says that Je the Moses went to the land of the Midianites, the land of the Midianites, we get, now we get Abraham and Keturah right here in Bol. I Lord, I got, I got in trouble right here with all these explanations. So Abraham, Sarah dies, and Abraham married his second wife, book of Genesis chapter 25. 
his second wife, Keturah. And Keturah and Abraham have sons and daughters, and one of his sons, one of Keturah's and Abraham's sons is Midian. Out of Midian, we have all these people who go to the land of Midian. Midian gives birth to Heber. Heber marries Jael. Is this a woman? This woman is part of all this tribe of the Rechabites, and one of the things of the Rechabites is they live in tents. They never set up a house built of stone. Because they live in tents, they were uh, good with hammers and chisels and nails to set up these tents. Jael, when God's people start fighting King Jehu, he, uh, uh, there's a man called Sisera. Sisera comes to the house of Jael and Heber. Heber was not there, but Jael was right there. And when Sisera comes to the house of Jael, he's fleeing from the troops. He's an enemy of God. And, Je and he asks Jael, can you give me some water? Jael, knowing that that's a man who's against God, she says, I'm going to give you warm meal, and she boils meal for this man. And when this man falls asleep, Jahel takes a big nail and a big hammer, the ones that they used to set up the tents. And the Bible says she put the nail right here, and she gets the hammer, and she drives the nail on Sisera's head. When the people who were after Sisera come to Jahel's and Jehovah's house, they find out that Sisera, the enemy, is dead, and the fighting stop. Wow. All right? <laughs> Jonadab, you go to 2 Kings chapter 10, after verse 15. Jonadab is the one who gave the Rechabites the commandment not to drink alcohol and not to set up houses of stone. But who is Jonadab? Jonadab is the descendant of all these people, and Jonadab is again King Ahab and Jezebel, and he will fight against the prophets of Baal. He killed one by one the ones who adore Baal. Mm. He says, let them come out, of the, come out of that place one by one, and he kills them one by one. Second Kings chapter 10. So Jonadab, we got Jonadab right there. Son of Rechab. Jonadab was the son of Rechab. And he's the one who slew all those people. He's also with prophet Elisha. All right? So those are the Rechabites. That's how the Rechabites start. It was not Jews that the Rechabites kept the commandments of Jonadab not to drink wine and not to set up houses. They also kept the commandments of the Lord because Abraham knew the Lord very well. And he transmitted to all his generations the commandments of the Lord and the ways of the Lord. All these people not only kept the commandments of Jonadab not to drink wine and not to settle houses in big cities, but they kept the commandments of the Lord. Amen. Jonadab, because remember these people, uh, partnership with Moses, they were in, insert into, the, into God's people. Not because they were Israelites, but because Moses and Hobab went together into the land. So now Jonadab sees how the Israelites get corrupt. Jonadab sees that in remembers probably Abraham shared with Jonadab what happened to Noah on Genesis chapter 6. That he planted a vineyard and he got drunk mm -hmm. and his son Ham... Look at his nakedness. And the Bible don't give us detail because the Bible says it is a shame to speak of those things who are done in secret. So that's why the Bible only mentions that him, look at his nakedness, at the, the, his father's nakedness. And for that, Noah cursed his son, the son of him, Canaan, and all the Canaanites are cursed because of this wicked and vile act that his father, him, you follow me all these names that his father, him, uh, did with, 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 with uh, Noah. So, Jonadab listened to the stories of Abraham, and he probably heard also the story of Lot. That Lot got saved, fled out of Sodom and Gomorrah, but Lot's daughters get him drunk, 
and committed incest with her own father. So Jonadab said, enough. And he gets, he gets his, his family gathered together and say, I don't want you to drink wine, not for the time that I'm not alive. But this is, this is what it says in verse number, six, verse number six. When Jeremiah brought the Rechabites to drink wine, this is how the Rechabites respond. Just imagine yourself, you in the palace, in the temple of God, and the prophet of God has put before you the commandment of the Lord. This is how they, they answer. But they say, we will drink no wine for Jonadab, the son of Rechab, our father, commend us, saying, you shall drink no wine, neither ye, neither your sons, forever. Right. He's not saying, I don't want you to drink wine in my presence. I don't want you to drink wine during Christmas. I don't want you to drink wine when you go to the football game. I don't want you to drink wine on your family reunion. No, he said, forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. And you know what? It's been 150 years since Jonadab died when Jeremiah asked the Rechabites to come and drink wine. And you probably could have said, well, it's been a long time. Maybe I can take a sip of this wine. No, the main Jonadab was not around. And this Rechabites kept his commandment for a, more than 150 years. Praise the Lord. What obedience. What obedience. And I'm sure the wine that Jeremiah was serving to these people was not cheap wine. I'm sure it was not 99 cents what was it called? Wild roses? So what was that thing? Mm -hmm. I mean, what was that thing that cheap wine that sell on the gas stations? Wild Irish. Wild Irish or something like that. Or something like that. Well, know. it was not cheap wine. It was probably the best wine. But these people say, no, we're not gonna drink that. And they, they go on to sell number seven. Now we're not if you're trying to, to put more temptations before our eyes, Jeremiah, or to or make us another test, we if you're trying to give us now another a big house. Build up stone. We're going to reject it too because our father Jonathan told us not to build a house with stone but to keep moving from town to town. So, we, I believe the reason why these people needed to be moving from town to town so they can proclaim the name of our Lord because every time they have to move to another land, they have to say, Who are you? We are the Rechabites and we fear the God of the Bible. Amen. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Huh? So Jonadab gave them that, that gave them that commandment because Jonadab knew that when these people were in the wilderness, every time they needed something, all they had to do is go to Moses and go to God, and manna came from the head. From the head. Every time when they were tired of manna, they wanted meat, God sent them chickens. When they were thirsty, God hit the rock with Moses, and there were water, like I was saying last time, that he turned the deserts into pools. Every time they needed something, God manifested himself in the desert. They got sick. He told Moses, tell them to look at the snake, and they will get healed. They knew that in the desert, God would provide for everything, and God showed them how to live in the desert with tents. So Jonathan said, this is how we're going to live. We're going to stay sober. We're not going to corrupt ourselves with alcohol, and we are not going to set up houses with stone. Praise the Lord. Amen. And what is Jonathan saying to these people? He said, we're not going to have alcohol. Why? Because alcohol is the door for other drugs. And those in this room, like Melissa, that know about drugs and alcohol, you start with alcohol, but you end up with marijuana, you end up with cocaine, you end up having sex with somebody that you don't want to have sex, you end up committing crimes. Why? Because you took one beer, one sip of alcohol. Alcohol is the door to many demonic things. And that's what Jonathan was trying to have his people to avoid all these problems. When you get drunk, people start getting undressed themselves. Yes or not? Right. So Jonathan was saying, if you go to the beach, I don't want you to sit down on the beach on your bikini and drink a 12-pack or drink bring you beer. I don't want such wickedness in here. I want a separation. I want to make a distinction among the Rechabites and the Israelites. Right? I don't want you to go and sit down in front of your television now that the football season is coming again. People is already talking about the Super Bowl. All right? I don't want you people, you guys, I don't want you to build 
men caves. Shame on you if you have a men cave before you have a homeschool room, before you have a prayer room, before you have any of those things. You should not have a men cave in your house. And that's what Jonathan was trying to avoid. Why do people do on men caves today? They get drunk and they watch football. Yeah? Remember, Jonathan told them to live in tents. And if you read right there on Jeremiah 35, King Nebuchadnezzar is getting ready to conquer the Israelites. The Israelites and he has to go to Jerusalem. And the Bible says that the Rechabites, they moved from the place where they were living right next to Jerusalem because of fear of King Nebuchadnezzar. Right? So the Bible let us know right there, they were living outside the walls of Jerusalem. What protection these Rechabites have, we know. Remember in those days, Jericho has walls. All the cities will build walls to protect themselves against enemies. But these people, these Rechabites, will live in tents. What protection they have? God Almighty, Amen. because they kept themselves holy Praise unto God. the Lord. God Almighty will put a fence. Or remember the book of John said, uh, Satan in, in Job number the chapter 2 accuses God and say, Well, Job is like that. But just remove the fence of protection that you have around Job, and we will see if he call, if he not call, 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 take your, your, your name in vain. Amen. So there's a fence of protection upon those who live a godly life. Praise the Lord. Right? Jonadab was trying to keep his people from mixing with a wickedness like Lot mixed with Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, Lot, look at the Lot, look at Sodom and Gomorrah, and you say, oh, we want to live over there. And then not only set up their tents right next to Sodom and Gomorrah, they end up living inside the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. But that's one thing that Jonadab was trying to avoid, was trying to make a separation among his people and the ungodly. So God used the people of the Rechabites to bring a rebuke to Israel, just like I did with Jeremiah's underwear, that he brought a review to the Israelites. Oh Jeremiah 35, verse 14, this is how, what the Lord says, the words of Jonadab, the son of Rechabite, they command, commanded his sons not to drink wine, and performing, they obeyed, for unto this day they drink none, but obey their father's commandment, notwithstanding I have spoken unto you recent early and speaking by ye, Stiffness, he hardened unto me. Verse 15, I have sent also unto you all my servants, the prophets, rising up early and sending them, saying, Return ye now every man from his evil way, and amend your doings, and not go not after other gods to serve them. And you shall dwell in the land which I give unto you and to your fathers, but ye have not inclined your ear not to hear them unto me, because the son of Jonadab. The son, the son of Rechab had performed the commandment of their father, which he commanded them, but his people had not heard unto me. God is saying right here, look, all these Rechabites obey the commandment of one man, Jonadab. And this man, who is this man? It's the mortal man who died. I have, I have the power of killing this man and to give him life. I'm God Almighty, I'm immortal, I'm Almighty, I have your life in my hands, and you don't obey me. You don't obey me. I have a people right here, I have a group of people right here showing the Israelites, these people, they didn't even, it was not even the chosen people, but they decided to be the chosen ones when they follow my commandments and the commandments of his father. And the commandment that Jonathan was given to them, it was not something that came out of his mind. It came out of his mind, but because he studied and he heard what happened to those who dream. Right. Yeah. He saw the examples of the Bible, he studied the scripture. Right? Praise the Lord. Unfaithful generation. So God gives a reward to the Rechabites. On Jeremiah 35, verse 18. He gives a reward for being obedient and doing the right thing before the Lord. Amen. Right? And it was not just because they didn't drink or they didn't live in, 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 in the house of stone. It's because they kept his commandments. Jeremiah 35, 18, it says this, You have obeyed your ancestor, Jonadab, following all his instructions. 
thus says the Lord. Jonadab, son of Re Rechab, will always have descendants who serve me. Wow. That is the reward that the Lord is giving to these Rechabites and to the descendants of Jonadab. And when you serve the Lord, Bible says, I have never seen the righteous forsaken, forsaken obeying bread, obeying bread mm -hmm. or his children. Mm -hmm. Amen. So when you serve the Lord, you say, well, what kind of reward is that to serve the Lord? When you're going to be blessed. You will lack anything, nothing, nothing. Because Jeremiah, his uncle comes to Jeremiah and says, but, but get this property from me. When Jeremiah was incarcerated, Jeremiah is in jail. When you're in jail, do you have money? You don't have money. But the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and said, yeah, I want you to buy this land. And Jeremiah probably scratched his head and said, Lord, I'm in jail. Where am I going to come up with the money from? But then his uncle comes to jail. Hey, Jeremiah, here is the title of this property. Buy it from me. And the Bible said that Jeremiah, I don't know where he got the money from. He ended up with the title of that property. Praise, God. Praise the Lord. When the Lord wants you to have something, even without, you don't even have to buy money. Because I say, I even, even says this, I say, I say, come and buy bread and milk, those who have no money. And you're like, what? How am I going to buy something without money? Praise the Lord. But when you're in the will of God, the Lord, the Lord will, make, will make a way. So with this, I want to ask you this question. God told his prophet Jeremiah, he says, there is the family over there outside Jerusalem. Go get them. I'm going to test them. I'm going to I'm gonna see if they're living holy and righteous life. And with this, I want to say this. Can God say the same thing about us? There is a family right there in West Virginia. Go and try them. Put some alcohol before them. Put some riches. See if they trade gold and silver. See that if, 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 if that's what they need. See if that's what Edgar needs, gold and silver. Huh? Can God look at our lives, of our families today? What legacy are we living for our kids? Jonadab was making sure that by giving this commandment of not drinking, his, this whole entire people, the Rechabites, were not only going to be blessed, but today, thousands and thousands and thousands of years later, we're still talking about the faithfulness and obedience of God's people who truly serve. The Lord. Amen. When you die, when I die, is your kids going to keep your instructions and your commitments? My daughter has never seen me with a cigarette in my mouth or with a nasty beer in my mouth. I'm instructing her. I'm teaching her. And sometimes I share with them the nasty things I did when I was a drunk. I'm not just telling them, hey, don't drink and don't, don't, don't smoke. I'm telling them, why? Why? You're going to end up in a, in a position that you don't want to be. You're going to lose everything. Like I said, you're a drunk, you're a loser. You lose everything. Man. You know? But then you say, oh, yes, I'm instructing my kids. Oh, yes. How can you, why you are a liar? You're not instructing your kids. The public school is instructing your kids. Do you think Jonathan sent his kids to public school? Jonathan was not trying to set up his camp. Oh, let's go to this district because... This, this is the good public school district. No. Jonathan was trying to see where the Lord wanted him to move from place to place. And because Man. they did not live inside Jerusalem, they did not send the kids to public school. They were homeschooling their kids right there in their tents. And one of the commandments in the public school was, Fear God and keep His commandments. Do not get wrong. Yeah. Ephesians 5, 8, 10, do not get drunk with wine. Instead, get drunk with the Holy Spirit. Praise God. Huh? But then you say, oh, yes, I'm instructing my kids good. No, you're not. You're a liar. The public school is instructing your kids. Nickelodeon is instructing your kids when they come home. You, 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 you turn on the TV. Disney Network is, is instructing your kids. You're a liar. You're a liar. You're not instructing your kids. You're not. Praise the Lord. So what example are we living for our kids? And then you say, well, preacher, it's been years since I have a drink. It's been years since I steal. It's been, I don't know how long since I, since I did anything against God, and I don't see my reward. 150 years, these Rechabites wait. The Bible says that it, it, after 
This man died was 150 years when his reward came through the Lord. Wow. And you only two or three years in the Lord and you already want your reward? <laughs> when somebody asks you to go preach, instead you go to full of your life fireworks? When somebody oh, asks you to go to Bible verse, the only Bible verse you know is John 3.16. Mm -hmm. Even Obama knows John 3.16. Uh, the Sodomites quote John 3.16. Yeah. The Sodomites, in fact, they, in fact, the Sodomites know more Bible verses than some of you look warms out there. Amen. Because when you go to the street and you preach to the atheists at the atheist convention, those atheists, they know the Bible very well. Even some of these Muslims, they know the Bible very well. And the Bible says, study to show yourself a proof unto God. Yes, it does. How can you call yourself that you live in a good instruction, a good example for your kids? This man kept in his heart all the teachings of Abraham. Mm -hmm. All the teachings of his father and his descendants. He, he kept his teachings on his heart and he transmitted these teachings to his children. Children that up until this day, my wife read Psalm 26, 9 today. I want to read it again because that kind of goes along with this. Psalm 26, verse 9. Gather not my soul with sinners, not my life with bloody men. How many times you hear of drones turning to killers? My dad was a drone. One day he got so drawn that he gathered some gasoline and he started pouring gasoline on my mother's body. And he was just looking for a lighter to set up my mother on fire. Me and my brother just want to start hitting my father to save my mother. And that's one of the things that Jonadab was trying to avoid with his congregation and his relatives. Yeah. Right? What does the scripture say? Uh, 26, 9. God is not my soul with sinners. Another thing, he tried to keep his people away from the Israelites. Oh, but the Israelites, oh, there's church people. Have you ever heard that expression? Why don't you leave your kids with so-and-so? He goes to church. You know what? I'm not leaving my kid with anybody. Amen. And that's what happened right here. Jonadab say, oh, but those are Israelites. Those are the chosen people. Those are God's people. And I'm, Jonadab was like, mm -mm. I have watched these people honor and worship other gods. I have watched these people do wicked, vile acts. I want my congregation, I want my family, my relatives to set yourselves apart. Oh, but we're not going to have the protections of the wall. Oh, but we're not going to be inside the, 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 the city. Don't worry. If you keep, if you fear God and keep his commandments, he will keep you from evil. Amen. All right? So the message is that. Jeremiah was a man, was a prophet that God told him to do crazy things. Crazy things. Who would have thought that a God, the God of the Bible, would tell somebody to go use his underwear to preach? <laughs> to go use his underwear to preach, but he did. He used Jeremiah's underwear, Jeremiah's thirteen, to rebuke the Israelites. Then he used the Rechabites to rebuke the Israelites. And we know who the Rechabites were. People who fear the Lord. How are we instructing our kids? And don't be a liar. If you're sending your kid to public school, you're not instructing your kid. Amen. It's the wicked teachers. It's the wicked government who's instructing your kids. It's not you. That's right. Father God, we come before you and then we...